Hey, welcome. My name is Ed. So this video has been eight months in the making and I am so excited and happy that I finally going to be able to get this project finished. So this is the one piece of the project that I was missing. Some of you know what it is. Some of you don't stick around and you'll find out. I'm really big into OEM unmodified um, stuff. That's what I'm trying to make this vehicle is look like OEM stock. That's why I don't have a fancy radiator and other things. Uh, the only thing really not OEM-ish on this car would be the little snail thing there, but that's okay. So the first part of this project is I need to remove this. And I don't know where my screwdriver is. I think it's in the other car when I was taking, apart, taking that apart. So let's go check. They tell me that I'm never gonna make it. They want me to do something that can make sense. They hate when I keep dreaming I'll be famous. But I don't give a fuck, I'ma keep chasing. I got all this potential that's deep inside of me. But they hate when you're successful. There we go, got it, that'll work. Um, this right here, I might have a future video on that. Uh, but that's not this video, so. Let's move on. Your boss, don't do anything that I wouldn't do. And when you're making money, make sure you don't spend it too soon. That and proceed. I need whatever the hell. Okay, let's do. Yeah, we'll do this. There we go. That was hard. So one of the first things we did to make this look OEM was I didn't tuck any of the wiring. I left everything exposed. And in fact, I actually have more stuff exposed really than what was by the factory. So I tried to keep it that kind of like cluttered look. Weird, I know everyone wants a clean engine, but I want a cluttered one. Another thing I did was I had these Audi coils, so I took those out and I put uh, factory coils in. You might say, well, isn't the Audi coils better than the factory? Uh, not by much. And in fact, there's one way to actually make this a lot better. We still need these to be like performance coils, so I'm gonna turn these into performance coils. Oh, now they're fast. So this bracket, special thanks to Michael, he sent me this bracket. So that's just going to bolt on there, and we're just going to put some screws in it. This is what I'm using, they're uh, Allen uh, M8s I believe. I don't know where I got them from. Probably either East Hardware or Home Depot. Ain't no unfunded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted. Stay humble. Now wake up. It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror. If he is no friend to me. It's not working now. Maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to... Yeah, I should have checked the suicide island that was before I... It's mine over everything. This... Uh, that's too small. This one? That's too big. This one? Perfect, yay! So you probably already figured it out, but that bracket's to hold this engine cover because I wanted to factory engine cover. It's actually kind of rare to see these cars with the factory engine cover, so I actually get a little more excited when I actually see that someone still has the factory engine cover on their car. So I wanted the engine cover myself, and I've been wanting this for years. So about eight months ago, Bailey sent me this engine cover. And I went ahead and I had to cut it for the turbo stuff, and I had to trim it over here for the turbo. I might smooth that out still, make it a little bit nicer, or put some kind of trim around it. Overall, this engine cover was in pretty good shape. Uh, it's not a 
It's not a brand new engine cover, but they look good. The emblem was no good on it. All the stuff was peeled off. So, I had to buy a new emblem on it. The emblem I just got on eBay, so what I did was I just measured here to here. And I just searched it on eBay and I just made sure that the one I bought had a big side here and a small side there. And it worked out perfect. So let me try and bolt this thing down. So we got it bolted on. There's the bracket. And everything looks good. Except I got an issue here. This hose is not letting this sit nice and flat. So, I think what we're going to have to do is, I can't get the hose pushed anymore. So I think I'm just going to have to get another hose longer and kind of run it underneath the intake and then back up. I originally mounted it here because I had a mounting spot for this clamp to make it look cleaner, but oh well. So yeah, you can see this side sits up just a little bit. But once that's done, everything is going to be perfect. Okay. I was planning on this being a little easier. Uh, I might need two hands for this. Hang tight. So part of my issue right now is this intake is hitting this, which is really kind of preventing me from pushing it forward to get my clearance there. So yeah, I'm going to have to cut this out more. That's going to suck. I didn't want to do that. All this is stationary, so if this is tight, it's not that big of a deal. This is not stationary. I mean, technically this is stationary, none of this is stationary. So, I don't want this hitting into there. So, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to get this thing closer. That looks way better. Now we gotta figure out how to get this on. 100, don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for I might just need to get a smaller filter. This is not working out too well. So anyway, we got the engine cover on. Uh, now we just can't get the intake on, so fuck it. There is a life lesson to be learned here. Doing a balance shaft removal. Uh, this is an alternative to doing the JWT BSR. Is the BSR kit easier to do? Definitely. Will this also work? Yes. There's some caveats to this. So it's almost a free um, balance shaft delete kit. Um, but it's not truly free because you need RTV, you need some O-rings and things like that. And you need something to cap off. I've already got the balance shaft out of the car. Uh, if you want to see how to get the balance shaft out of the car, there is plenty of YouTube videos on how to do that. Just search Nissan Sentra or QR25 uh, balance shaft removal and you'll find it. So no sense of me making another video of that there's already five out there. So Okay, so this is the balance shaft. This is the assembly that spins like twice as fast as your engine. Whoa! Okay, this is going to leak some oil. So here's what you need to know. To get the balance shaft off, you need an uh, e-torque set. Something like that. You need an offset uh, wrench. These right here are standard nuts. These are not to get the balance shaft open because we need to open this balance shaft up. If you just cut the chain, you're reducing your oil capacity, but really what you're doing is you're sending oil to something that doesn't need it. We would rather have that oil pressure going to other parts of the engine. So that is why we're gonna disassemble this, take it apart. We're gonna turn this into a baffle and then we gotta plug the oil line. There's a special tool you can get on Amazon to actually get these out. But I'm not about to spend, you know, 20 bucks uh, to get these out for something I'm going to use one time. And I'm not even going to use this in my car. I am actually going to use the JWT kit. Ugh. 
Good thing. Oh. This ain't working. Oh, this might have been easier on the car. What's that advice? Okay, change your plans. You're gonna probably need to get the right socket and you're probably gonna need to get an impact. I don't have either. I'm not gonna be able to walk you through it. Uh, I'm not gonna buy the parts. So, this is what we need. You need to be able to get this separated. Pull everything out. And once you pull everything out, we gotta turn this into a baffle. So then you basically reconnect everything and you're gonna drill a bunch of holes in this thing. And so drilling the holes will give the oil, will let the oil move around um, through this. And that will give you your extra oil capacity. Uh, you gotta get the oil, you're gonna have to get the O-rings and the oil feed going to this, you need to plug up. So this went from a how-to video to a just letting you know that it's possible to be done. And I don't know. By the time you buy the right tools, if you don't already have it, it might just be better off going with the kit instead of trying to take this thing apart. Shit happens. Let's move on to another project. Should I finish the oil pan? Nah. Let's do something more fun. So I got this gas cap. I mean, I know it caps off the gas tank, but... There's more to it, right? I mean, if there wasn't more to it, why would uh, why would you get a check engine light or open door fuel light when this thing is not on or is not working properly? So let's take a look. There's a seal there. That's kind of neat. And if you look inside, you can kind of see like a little spring thingy in there. Have you ever been curious how this actually works and what's in there? Um, probably not, but... Now that I have this thing, just laying around, I kind of want to know what's in it. So, let's break it open. <clears throat> okay, we got it separated. So, I hope I don't need a gas cap anytime soon. Oh, shoot. Okay, so there's a little spring in there. There's plastic pieces. More plastic pieces. Uh, some, looks like a bearing in there. Okay, so there was another spring in there. This is a thing that looks like a bearing. I don't know what it does. Rubber thing on here. Okay, it's torn apart. We accomplished something today. Yay! We destroyed a gas cap. So, of course, today things didn't go as planned. But, it is what it is. And I think there's an important lesson to be learned. There's going to be things that don't go the way that you want to. There's going to be bumps in the road. But those bumps in the road is what makes the destination a lot more exciting. If it was easy to get to the destination, you wouldn't appreciate as much as if you had to work for it. So the way I handle these bumps in the road is I take a gas cap and I destroy the shit out of it. So there are several people in this video I have to thank. The first person is Matt. He's the one that supplied the OEM ignition coils. The second one is Bailey. He supplied the engine cover for the car. And last is gonna be Michael. He's the one that supplied the bracket that I needed to actually install the engine cover. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, cool. Uh, Aloha, peace out, catch you in the next one.